We're going to get this program started. Uh, good evening and welcome to our Thomas J. Devron Community Center. Uh, this building was named after our former mayor who also served in the New Jersey Assembly for 22 years and prior to being elected mayor served as the president of the Carter Board of Education. So it's fitting that we're having this meeting here uh, in, in a building named for him. I'm going to ask that Commander Lasicki stand and lead us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And please, a uh, moment of silent prayer for those suffering from the most recent hurricane, especially in the Bahamas and other areas of the country. Thank you. You can be seated. Please make sure your cell phones are on silent or vibrating. If you have to take the call, please step towards the back or outside of the building so not to interfere uh, with the program. I'm happy to host tonight's forum uh, on, on dealing with this uh, school referendum and the question of uh, borrowing funds to build a brand new school. This was a project that was put forth by the Board of Education, having worked together over the past year. When they put this up for a vote, this was unanimously supported by all nine members of the Board of Education to present this question to the public. And what the question does is ask the residents of our community, the taxpayers and the citizens, the voters, if they want to appropriate approximately $37 million for the construction of a new junior high and for other improvements to all of the other public schools in our community. We're going to hear a presentation this evening uh, from our superintendent of schools and from the expert panel assembled professionally, the professional staff that have been assembled to work on this project. Uh, with us, we have Gary Higgins, who's the managing partner for Lord Vinci and Higgins, the uh, board's auditor. We have Lloyd Rosenberg, who's the uh, managing partner and CEO of uh, DMR Architects. And we'll have Nicholas Rotunda, who's the vice president of TNM Engineering. And they've worked collaboratively with Rosa's staff, with my administration, with our construction people, uh, to present this program to you. So without any further ado, let me introduce um, our superintendent of schools to, to begin the program, Rosa Diaz. Rosa? With me tonight is my administrative team, many of my uh, administrators within the buildings themselves, uh, many of my staff are here tonight as well, and the Carteret Board of Education as well. We are excited to be able to present to you the referendum proposal that is up for a vote on September 24th. Um, we've been working really hard to be able to make many improvements to this district, uh, which will coincide with a lot of the upgrades that are happening in this town. And we believe the schools should match that as well. So our district goals are instruction. We believe that all of our kids deserve a high quality education, a rigorous curriculum, uh, student health and wellness. We want to provide a culture that's positive and supportive. Uh, facilities, we believe that our facilities, all of our buildings, classrooms, should be conducive to learning. And security, obviously, is always our number one priority because none of the learning takes place unless our children and our staff feel safe in their buildings. Uh, currently, we're working on some bathroom renovations at the high school, which have been gutted, uh, and we hope to have those open shortly for our students. We have partnered along with the borough and have this amazing new athletic field, and now our students, our teams, can host home games and matches. Uh, or meets against other teams um, on a beautiful field, and we can also host a beautiful graduation for our students in June. In our schools, we are replacing, we're currently replacing a lot of our desktop computers. Um, if you've entered our buildings, you would see that we have new security upgrades. We have a system in place where we are uh, taking photos of driver's license that are running background checks of any, any visitors into our buildings to make sure our kids are safe. And we're very proud of, obviously, our new website, our district app, but also the fact that all of our entering sixth grade students and ninth grade students are receiving a very new Chromebook. Uh, students should be receiving that tomorrow as well at Carter High School. Um, but they'll have that for the length of time that they spend in our school. Think tanks at the elementary level, we invested a lot of money into uh, improving these media centers. They're now STEM labs, so science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. 
Our students have the opportunity to create, to think critically in the classroom, to create, have innovative ideas and explore, um, all with the materials and the furniture that we have in those rooms. At the high school and at the middle school, we've also invested in improving the learning environments there. The high school is definitely one of the schools that needed a lot of work, whether it was construction or just replacing a lot of the uh, furniture and items that we had in the school. And so we focused last year on the math department, replacing all of the furniture in those classrooms. And this year we have 13 new uh, English department classrooms with all brand new furniture, new teacher's desks, new storage cabinets as well. The middle school, I wanna say we replaced all of the furniture in the entire school. Playgrounds at all of the elementary schools. Um, thanks to our early childhood program, um, we have many students in our, in our town that are benefiting from a pre-K education, and part of that is providing a place of free play. And so we had to make an investment in providing these playgrounds, and they're beautiful. If you haven't had a chance, I recommend you drive, drive by Columbus School, it's probably the easiest one to view, or Nathan Hale School, but they are beautiful. So why not? Why is it that we're asking the voters to go and vote on September 24th? Well, the current conditions in our building require it. If you aren't aware, three of our buildings right now are at least 60 years old, and two of our schools are about to have their centennial celebration, so 100 years. Uh, it's time. It's time that our students have the opportunity to go to a state-of-the-art facility. Uh, with all of the upgrades and all the bells and whistles that other students receive in other districts. So I took the liberty of taking some pictures. I've done a lot of walkthroughs through all of our buildings. And I just wanted to share with you, for those of you that haven't had the opportunity to see our schools and what they look like, but our students go to the bathrooms that look like this. And if you went to the high school here, like I did, and like many of us in this room did, the bathrooms are pretty much the same. They have not changed at all. If anything, they're just falling apart, um, and we patched up as much as we could, you know, over the years, but there's only so much patching that you can do, and I think our kids deserve better than that. Again, some more pictures, and I'm stressing the bathrooms because that is probably, um, those have to be the, the worst conditions that we have in the buildings right now, and the hallways, uh, excuse me, the stairwells are very, very dated, they feel like a dungeon when you walk through them. Um, many of them are just not in the, in the best conditions at all. We are proposing a brand new state-of-the-art junior high school for grades seven and eight. We're also including upgrades and renovations to each of our school buildings so that everybody receives something. That's the school, complete with brand new science labs and equipment, uh, and beautiful, beautiful collaborative spaces, and um, the architects will be able to share with you some of the details that are over there highlighted on those boards. Um, obviously, I mentioned the upgrades that are going to happen, uh, beautifying our schools. The high school auditorium will be one of those big uh, projects that are going to be featured, completely renovated with a mezzanine area, and gymnasiums that have HVAC. Smaller classroom size. Often the complaints that I get is, well, my child can't get into this school, my child can't go to this school, this is where we should be going. A big part of that problem, if you've attended some of our board meetings, is space. And by doing something like this, building that new school, there would be a, a reconfiguring of the grades, and that would allow for more space to be able to have all siblings in one location. So some of the highlights, are the science labs, right? The maker space think tanks, uh, performing art spaces, which is a very big program. We have a feeder program created at the elementary, middle, that goes into the high school, so that's a growing program, visual art spaces, and our community spaces, as I mentioned, that uh, the auditorium at the high school and the gymnasiums where we host a lot of our graduations or different events where you, the community, come in. How did we get here? Well, in January of 2019, we retained the Architects DMR, and we've been working very closely with them since. In February of 2019, they came in, they visited all of our buildings, and we started working on our long-range facilities plan. 
And in February of 2019, we also went ahead and acquired the Applied Data Services Company, which uh, performed our demography report. And that report is basically what details what the projection for enrollment will be in the district for the next coming years. And based on that, all of that information, we were able to determine what our next moves would be. So what would happen? We would have an existing middle school. Carter Middle School would be reconfigured to a grade five, six school. Every elementary school would be reconfigured to, from pre-K to four. And obviously the district prioritized safety concerns. All right, April 2019, schematic plans were developed and approved by the New Jersey Department of Education. So that's a very big step and it's a very important piece of information that everybody needs to know that these proposals aren't just ideas that we drafted and put together and said, okay, this is what we're gonna do. This is something that's a long thought out process that gets approved by the specialist out of the Department of Education. It's a well thought out process. May 2019, we also received the approval from the Department of Education on uh, the projects for eligible costs, right? So what portion they would be funding. And June 2019, our Board of Education approved for these meetings to happen, right? They proposed a resolution and passed it, setting a referendum date and proposal. All right, so moving now to DMR Architects. Here is Lloyd. Thank you very much. Uh, Superintendent explained the, the project, the process, the approval part of it. Now I'm gonna run through some of the details and after the meeting would be available to answer some questions. So the proposed project. So the project starts with a new 600 student junior high school. So up there we have a rendering of it. It's a three-story building. It's raised above the ground. It's gonna to connect to the existing high school on the second floor. So there's access between this building and the existing high school. It's a... Um, about a 30,000 square foot building on each floor. So the first floor houses the administrative area. It's secured, uh, so someone to get into the building has to go through a security measure. There's administrative offices, there's the nurse's suite, there's the general classrooms, and the main part of the middle of the building is gonna be the cafeteria. So we have the cafeteria, we have a vocal room, a band room, a dance studio, and part of the cafeteria is going to be a warmer kitchen. So we have services, mechanical equipment, and all the support facilities on the first floor of the building. Second floor of the building houses the main part of that is the gym, the media center, the guidance suite, classrooms, and some science labs, along with some administrative support facilities for, uh, to monitor the kids that are in the building. And on the third floor, we have, because we have a two-story gym, so that's the upper level of the gym, we have an art room, the think tank that the superintendent talked about, general classrooms, and some small group instruction rooms. So this entire building houses 600 students. It has access from the street, has access from the high school, and is very well secured in all the security measures that we can impose in the building. So there are other things that are going to be done during this referendum process to do something at each school. At the high school, we are going to put some new lighting, handrails, repair these the stair towers, mostly for safety and security reasons, to bring them up to code, bring them up to date, and repair the auditorium. So one of the big projects in the high school is the renovation of the auditorium. So if you've been in the auditorium, you know that the second floor balcony has been covered up over the years and is no longer a balcony. So we're gonna open that up and allow that to be seating areas for the high school. New flooring, new walls, new ceiling, new seating, new lighting, new sound, all the things that are needed for a high school production or a high school play or a high school event. As we go up, each floor of the high school stairs are going to be 
renovated. So that we're going to have stair towers that are safe, secure, with all the necessary ADA requirements to make it safe and accessible. So in the middle school, we're also going to repair the stairs as well to make them safe and secure. It's one of the necessary things to do for the safety of the students and faculty. We're also putting a new a mechanical system, air conditioning, heating system into the gym. Again, we're going to replace and renovate the stairs. Columbus, similar renovating the stairs as well, caught sort of a common theme in the district to make the stairs more accessible and usable and safe. So these forms you can take a look at later during the program. This shows the design of the building. This shows the plans of the building and some ideas of what the interiors could look like in each space. This plan shows the renovation of the existing buildings. And this one is devoted to the renovation of the auditorium. So you see a before and after photo. So we have the existing photo and then what it could look like after the renovation is done. So during construction, we're going to be very careful in the construction phase to make sure that the students and the construction workers are separated. Some of the work will be done off hours. Some of the work will be done during secure, restricted areas so that we have a safety program in effect. So the schedule. All right. So referendum is passed, approved, and go to work. We plan on doing the construction documents, getting all the approvals necessary, going to bid. This is a public project, so it has to be bid. Bids are awarded, uh, bids are open, and bids are awarded, and then construction starts. So we're planning a project, it's approximately three years from September to opening of the new school. Now obviously some of the renovation projects will be done earlier during that time frame, but the new building will be ready for occupancy three years from September if we vote on the referendum. I'm going to turn it over to Gary, who is going to tell you how he's going to function. Right? Good evening, everyone. Gary Higgins uh, from the uh, district's audit firm. Uh, I'm going to go over the financial areas. As the superintendent previously mentioned, uh, the district, like all other districts in the state of New Jersey now, are subject to a 2% cap. Uh, so we're very limited on what we can do through the ordinary budget that's done annually. Uh, but as the superintendent outlined, uh, we have kept up with certain maintenance items and also have done certain small capital projects. We have two things in favor of the district right now. A 2010 bond issue uh, expired and the current debt service component of your budget uh, drops by approximately $790,000. Uh, in addition to that, interest rates are at historically low rates. We propose a 30-year bond for this project based upon uh, the determined useful life by the bonding attorneys. So what you have going on in your favor is a substantial drop off in the debt service component going along with low interest rates um, and we're figuring at the current time 3.5% uh, as a 30-year interest rate. Uh, and as an example, uh, last week or a week and a half ago, um, one of our clients sold bonds for 13 years and they got 1.9%. So as people say on the street, money's cheap right now. If you're going to do construction, it's the right time to do it because it's like a mortgage. If the mortgage rates are good, that's when you go out and refinance or you purchase a new home to take advantage of the uh, lower interest cost as part of your uh, monthly payment. This project uh, is eligible for state aid on eligible costs totaling $12,586,000. On that amount, the district would get 58.59%, uh, which comes up to approximately $7.4 million. The only way you can ascertain this state aid is by having a referendum approved. You can't get it through your ordinary budget. So when you look uh, at the proposed projects, total 37 million, 
the expected state aid would be 7.4 million, which reduces the amount that the district would have to subsidize with tax dollars. And as I previously mentioned, when you take the 800 or $790,000 drop off, that's approximately 50% of the 29.6. So you come out that you only have to really pay as additional money uh, the other half. Uh, all these projects uh, Lloyd had gone over uh, in the various schools. Uh, this is the breakdown of the total project cost, which approximate 37 million. And then based upon what's been filed and approved by the state, the state aid numbers are in the center at 7,374,000 with the net number of the $29,625,000. Uh, so what happens to that next? If the voters um, go, to the, go to the ballot on September 24th and approve this referendum, uh, the district share would be 29,625. An average home, the assessed value in the tax assessor's office is $240,000. Uh, the tax increase over the previous existing debt service uh, would be $81 or $7 a month on a home assessed at $240,000. Uh, to do your own calculation, if you're not at $240,000, every $100,000 of assessed valuation equates to $34. Uh, but we use the average, and that's taken uh, right out of the tax duplicate, um, the calculation for 2019. So the cost, uh, based upon the current interest rates and our projected 3.5%, which it hopefully could even be less than that, puts you at $7 a month or $81 per year for the life of the bonds. One of the things that we're up against is really the only way to get this type of substantial dollar amount is through a referendum. Uh, we do have the ability to finance a capital reserve uh, every year in the month of June before the books are closed, but that's limited to only excess monies that come out of the budget. And as I started off saying, your budget is limited to a 2% increase every year, so there's really not a lot of money left after the budget is spent to add to this capital reserve. So really the only, you can do, only way you can do a project of this magnitude uh, is to uh, get a, a referendum approved and then also take advantage of the state aid that's available if the referendum was approved. Certain taxpayers ask, you know, if I approve this, what can happen after that? Can the board just go and spend another 20 million on top of what I approve? Uh, they can. Uh, that 37 million dollars, if approved, uh, that's the limit, that's the maximum. Uh, there are contingencies built in uh, for un con unforeseen conditions and uh, various construction issues. Uh, so uh, the board would be limited to the 37 million and couldn't go and spend any money beyond that without going back to the voters again. So what's next? Well, that's the timeline, right? All these steps that we described throughout the presentation. So here we are, we're at the public meetings. We've already done one previously and then tonight. So after this, we have two more, September 12th and September 18th. September 12th will be at Carteret Middle School, September 18th will be at Menu School. And beyond that, it will be the vote on September 24th. So what does your vote mean? Well, if the voters decide to approve this referendum, if this town decides that, yes, that's what it wants, then the district would receive a new grade 7-8 junior high school and all of the re renovations and upgrades that we've been discussing at all of the buildings. If the voters reject the referendum, the district won't receive the new junior high, nor the upgrades that were described in this project. We do have this presentation available for you on our Carteret Schools website. If you'd like to take a deeper look into the slides uh, to review the information. Um, and of course, we're always here to answer any questions that you may have.